Hi, welcome to today's Piece of Peace. Started off my journaling this morning just with a heart of gratitude. Thanking God for a couple that's been living with us since the end of October. Um, they're in transition um, from selling their house and moving to the West Coast and they got to stay with us for uh, several weeks. But the bonus for me is that she is a gourmet chef and um, and her husband has been a dear friend and a mentor to my husband for a long time. So it has been a blast having them here. And I was thanking God for her because she's got this great sense of humor and she retains, like she has this memory, like crazy memory, and like knows all these tri trivia kind of facts in her head. And <laughs> it just makes me laugh. She's filled with joy. She's lighthearted. She sings, she sings beautifully. And she sings worship and many other different genre of songs around the house. And um, she has this great one-liner kind of humor. And I was thanking God for it and the other day. And she was calling out to all of us because she cooks dinner every night. I can't tell you how amazing that is. That I don't have to cook for us for a series of a while. And I was just thanking the Lord for any mom out there. If you could have someone just prepare your meal in the evening, wouldn't you just die? Like, this would be the best gift ever. Mm -hmm. And I'm feeling that right now. But um, she's preparing a meal one day. We we're all just working because we're all working from home. And um, all of a sudden, we hear the cry out from the kitchen, 10 minutes to Wapner. <laughs> and I just about died. Just about lost it. Meaning, hi, dinner's going to be on the table in 10 minutes, but she just has these funny little nuances that I take great delight in, and I find myself laughing so hard that my stomach hurts most every day. <laughs> so I was thanking God for laughter and life, because she kind of oozes that from her being. Thanking God for her is so sweet. And just going through the list of things that I had gratitude for, and writing them out, and I encourage you to do the same, because when you can write something out like that, when you can take the focus off of things that are hard, and look at what you have that are blessings. When we have a heart of gratitude, it opens us up to God in such a different way that we can receive from Him uh, without a clenched fist or without uh, an orphaned spirit where we're just needy, needy, needy. Um, we're children of the Most High King, sons and daughters of the Most High. He's our provider. We can rest. And in that, we have gratitude. So search for the gratitude and just the beautiful um, treasures that God has along the way. Yesterday we talked about desert flowers and how incredibly unique they are as they're having to endure such just harsh circumstances and harsh um, habitat and terrain. And, and yet from the tiny bit of water that they get in the desert, they, create, they are just uniquely beautiful. So um, don't miss the desert flowers. Today my desert flower was this, like I've been doing these pots outside the front of my house for Christmas and getting ready that for the holidays and and I'm kind of a scavenger hunter to do my pots. I don't go out and buy all these expensive greens and I, I save the same <laughs> birch birch branches that I've had for years and I put them in the pots and I save the, save the same dogwood and um, but this year, and I had a very good friend named Jill who gave us some cut greens that she had taken off of her evergreens, and that was like the major part of my of my creations and my six pots. And but I needed some more to fill in the the area, so I was just asking God, would you provide that? And today I stopped by one of the stands where they're selling um, Christmas trees. And I said, Hey, do you have any of these cut greens and he goes, I have a whole pile of them over there. I go, how much do you want for them? And he goes, we'll just take whatever you want. I'm like, what? Score. And I'm hauling all these sappy greens to my little orange car. And I just was, de I was delighted that God just blessed me with that. So these very sweet little nuances that he brings, don't miss them. It could be a breeze. It could be watching a bird in a bird feeder. It could be a deep breath and a sense of peace in a time that's crazy. It could be a beautiful sun ray coming out of the sky or a leaf going across the yard or anything. He cries out in his nature. 
And if we don't worship him, the rocks are going to worship in our place. Oh, I don't want any rock worshiping for me. Today is December 2nd, and we're going to be in Isaiah this morning. Um, and it's the author is James Bank, and he titles it Christmas Presence as God's as in God's presence. We've been talking so much about that. God's presence in our life. His presence. Practicing his presence. Staying in his presence. And this is super important in this time. But I'll start in Isaiah. We're going to be in 7. We'll go from 10 to 14. And again, God spoke to Ahaz. Ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. But Aha said, I will not ask. I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear now, you house of David. Is it not enough to try the patience of men? Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, God with us. His presence now is not in the Holy of Holies because that veil was torn from top to bottom when Jesus died on the cross. It is God with us. In that verse that I say often, One thing I ask, what I seek, is to dwell in the presence of you, Lord, all the days of my life, that I may gaze upon your beauty and inquire of you in your temple. And the Lord, and that's Janelle's paraphrase, but the Lord knows um, this is where he's meeting us now. Intimate relationship, the two of us. That he speaks right to us because Jesus breathed the Holy Spirit into the disciples. That they could be governed by the Holy Spirit when he ascended to heaven. And we have that same Holy Spirit that the disciples had Jesus breathe on them in us today. The same Holy Spirit. Practice the presence of God. Ask him into your everyday life. I asked him to go on my errands today. I said, God, can you keep me present to you while I'm on my errands today? And he showed me how to get greens. And he, It was just beautiful interaction. I was gazing on his beauty as I was driving. I was interacting with him in conversation, acquiring of him, him acquiring of me, dialogue going on between him and I, and it was precious. James writes this as he titles it Christmas Presents. No ear may hear his coming. But in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. Those words from Philip Brooks, much loved him, O little town of Bethlehem. It says, point to the very heart, those words point to the very heart of Christmas. Jesus came into our broken world to to rescue us from our sin and give all who would put their faith in him a new vital relationship with God. In a letter to a friend, decades after he wrote the hymn, Brooks poignantly described the outcome of this relationship in his own life. I cannot tell you how personal this grows to me. He is here. He knows me and I know him. It is no figure of speech. It is the realest thing in the world. And every day makes it (laughs) realer. And one wonders with delight what it will grow to as the years go on. Brooks' calm assurance of God's presence in his life reflects one of the names of Jesus as prophesied by Isaiah. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. The Gospel of Matthew gives us the meaning of the Hebrew name Emmanuel. God with us. His presence with us. Draw near. God drew near to us through Jesus so we could draw near to him personally and be with him forever. 
His loving presence with us is the greatest gift of all. Practice this presence. It is absolutely the greatest gift we could have. His presence. It is the one thing that David cried. When, when, when David, the most imperfect king, <laughs> sinned, but had God called him a man after my own heart. And when he sinned, his cry to God after losing his son because of his sin with Bathsheba, his cry wasn't. His cry after repentance was, please just don't take your presence from me. Please just don't take your presence from me because David knew that that was the greatest gift that God could give us, his presence. When you start practicing it, you're going to see that it is the greatest gift and you won't want to be without it ever again. Um, James's charge to us was this. What does it mean to you that God loves you so much he wants to be with you always? How do you draw near how will you draw near to him today? Practicing his presence. And his prayer was this Loving God, thank you for giving yourself to me through your life on earth, death on the cross, and resurrection. Please help me to live for you today and forever. And that brought me into Jesus calling, practicing that presence of God, thanking him that he came, God, with us, and that we get to dialogue with him and be engaging with him on a personal level. Huge gift, his presence. So Jesus Calling is written by Sarah Young. She writes from the perspective of Jesus talking to us. And this is what today says. I am the Prince of Peace. As I said to my disciples, I say also to you, peace be with you. Since I am your constant companion, my peace is steadfastly with you. When you keep your focus on me, you experience both my presence and my peace. Worship me as King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and Prince of Peace. You need my peace each moment to accomplish my, my purpose in your life. Sometimes you're tempted to take shortcuts in order to reach your goal as quickly as possible. But if the shortcut requires turning your back on my peaceful presence, you must choose the longer route. Walk with me along paths of peace. Enjoy the journey in my presence. And that's today's piece of peace. God bless you.